The series begins with young girl, Rina Verk of Saanich, rebels against her strict Indian-Canadian family. She seeks friendship from a clique of fellow teen girls who idolize gangsters and call themselves the CMC4, Crips Mafia Cartel. After the ringleader, Josephine, Bell, ostracizes Rena, she steals Josephine's phone book and uses it to spread insulting rumors about Josephine. In retaliation, she invites Rena to a party. Rena even skips her family dinner to join them. They all meet near the bridge, and then Josephine and her friends try to assault Rena. That night, Rena went missing. Rena's family reports her missing. Meanwhile, Rebecca Godfrey returns to British Columbia after 10 years in New York City. She plans to write a book about troubled girls in the area and goes to the Seven Oaks Youth Home, where she meets Josephine and other CMC girls. After Rena went missing for days, Officer Cam Bentland launches a mission into the river to find some clues. Divers find Rena cloths at the bottom of the river while schoolgirls are watching it from the school. They arrest several teenage girls, including Josephine and her friends. But CCTV footage shows Rena comes out under the bridge, which makes Officer Cam suspicious. Without further evidence against girls, all are released, Josephine calls Rebecca, who comes to the precinct and pretends to be her guardian, in an attempt to learn more about homicide, Rebecca is attempting to get close to those girls. In the present, Josephine and another CMC girl, Dusty Pace, take Rebecca to the bridge. Josephine claims that, after the initial assault, she followed Rena and pushed her over the bridge's railing. Dusty and Rebecca are horrified. Downriver, Rena's body is discovered in the portage inlet. Cam questions Dusty, who confesses what Josephine said about pushing Rena. Rebecca tells Cam, her childhood friend that Josephine took credit for killing Rena. Cam counters that Josephine has an alibi because she had signed into Seven Oaks by the midnight curfew, about the time Rena was killed. Cam removes Josephine as a suspect after verifying the timestamps of the CCTV tape and determining that she was not present at the juvenile home or at the bridge at the same time. So why does Josephine tell lies? What went wrong with Rena and the teenage girls? It looks like there is some incompatibility between Rebecca and Cam, even though they are childhood friends. To answer these questions, we need to delve into the past. In 1951, Rena's grandparents moving to Canada, where Suman is born. They are victims of xenophobia, but the family finds acceptance among the Jehovah's Witnesses. When Suman is a young adult, she meets Manjit while he is visiting from India. Even though Suman's parents didn't like Manjit, Suman married him. In the second set of flashbacks, we can see Rena is getting bullied due to her body hair. She is slowly developing a friendship with Josephine, who is a psychopathic girl coming from a broken family. One day, Josephine and her friends Kelly and Dusty come to dinner at Rena's house. While they are having their dinner, Manjit attempts to talk to Josephine about her broken family, which enrages her. They immediately leave the scene. After the girls leave, two things are missing, Rena's bird, smooch, and Suman's heirloom earrings. The next day, Rena tells the girls she isn't allowed to hang out with them anymore. In turn, Josephine convinces Rena to lie about her home life so she can live at Seven Oaks. Smooch returns home. Manjit is arrested after Rena accuses him of beating and sexually molesting her. In the next flashback, we can see, when Rebecca was 13 years old, she was cruel to Gabe when Cam was also present. Rebecca's feelings for Cam were evident. Fed up with that, he leaves the house before he falls into the ocean and drowns. At present, Josephine is surprised to find Rena's muddy Steve Madden boots in her closet, her friend Kelly says she did it for Josephine. She reveals that she killed Rena to Josephine and Dusty when Kelly brags about standing on Rena's neck, Dusty attacks her. Josephine and Kelly worry Dusty may eventually crack under the pressure. After Rena's funeral, Cam addresses the media in an effort to intimidate any witnesses into coming forward. Rebecca offers to assist Cam by feigning support from the CMC. 
Kelly's school locker has violent drawings that the cops find. Rebecca is introduced to a local guy gang by the girls, she takes LSD with Warren, a teenage male who is pals with these girls, to demonstrate that she is not a cop. She discusses her history while high. Warren acknowledges that he saw Kelly murder Rena. Rebecca and Warren are becoming closer. CMC girls inform the police that Warren acted alone to assault Rena. Dusty refuses to talk, telling Cam that Warren is the murderer. Cam and her father, Chief of Police Roy Bentland, question Samara, Warren's girlfriend, who reveals Warren told her that both he and Kelly dragged Rena into the water. The police arrest the CMC, including Warren. At his trial, Warren admits to having participated in the first assault. He also testifies that he neither intervened nor participated when Kelly killed Rena. The judge believes Warren bears more responsibility than he claims and finds him guilty of second-degree murder. Warren is sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole, Rebecca encourages Warren to testify. He meets with Suman, who explains that her faith encourages mercy, and she forgives him. Warren testifies, admitting that he and Kelly beat up Rena before Kelly drowned her. Kelly takes the stand and vehemently denies killing Rena. She is found guilty and given the minimum sentence of five years imprisonment. During the trial Rebecca gets emotional about Warren as she remembers about her drowned brother. After the end of trial, Rebecca returns to New York to publish her book. Cam learns that she was part of the Adopt Indian Metis program and was forcibly taken from her birth family. She seeks them out to reconnect. The epilogue explains that the Verks became anti-bullying activists. Suman died in 2018 and Rebecca in 2022. Until her death, she maintained a close connection with Warren. Warren was released on parole in 2010. Kelly appealed her case and was given a life sentence. She confessed to murdering Rena in 2016. Shortly afterwards, she was granted day parole.